You are watching the SEC Big 12 Challenge presented by Continental Tire. Welcome inside the WVU Coliseum. The Mountaineers welcome in the 15th ranked Auburn Tigers, the first of many signature matchups today as part of the challenge. We are glad that you are here with us with Dave Branshaw, the former Vols captain, Devin Fitzgerald with you. Here's his West Virginia team. It's won two of its last three. Meanwhile, Auburn has been in the top 25 all year long, so we couldn't have asked for a better way to start this challenge today. No question. This matchup has all the signs of a first-round NCAA tournament game. Yeah. Two well-coached teams, well-prepared. They defend. They're physical for West Virginia. A huge non-conference resume building opportunity and for Auburn you look at an opportunity to prove and get one on the road where they will have their toughest road test of the entire season. Well toughest environment that means you need your tough playmaker Wendell Green Jr. to perform. Yeah as Wendell Green goes so do the Auburn Tigers it begins and ends with him. They ask him to do so much be a playmaker defensively be a distributor be their best scorer on the perimeter but more than just the playmaking they have to have his poise in this game if they're going to win one on the road. And on the other side, when you talk about elite competitors in college basketball, you have to mention Eric Stevenson's name. This kid wakes up ready to ball. Yes, he talks the talk a little bit, but he can walk the walk and back it up. He's on his fourth school and four seasons, but he has found a home here under Bob Huggins and playing the best basketball of his career. You see the double-double he went for on Wednesday. That Texas Tech win. He is familiar with this Auburn team at South Carolina a year ago. Faced him a couple of times. They meet again. You think they're ready inside this place for this one? Yeah, I'm going to turn around and look at the uh, uh, fans for a second. This is amazing. <laughs> this is great. What an atmosphere. Sold out. Let's go. 14,000 in the house. First of 10 challenge games. We know how elite and stacked the Big 12 has been this year. Up first, though, 15th ranked Auburn against West Virginia. How about Mountaineers in those gray and then Auburn in the orange. Auburn starting off in a little bit of a zone. They'll switch to man-to-man -to -man if it gets deep. So after the Trey Mitchell miss, Auburn coming back the other way. This is Bruce Pearl's starting five. Wendell Green Jr., he is their leading scorer. Meanwhile, keep an eye out for number four in the paint. That's Janiah Broom. He has been an enforcer inside this year. This time they lob it up to Jalen Williams. Little contact, could not convert it. West Virginia back the other way. So this is how Bob Huggins counters. Stevenson bumps. And he draws the foul right in front of Bruce Pearl in the Auburn bench. Smart yes. play by Stevenson to really sell that foul. There's a little bit of contact, but he was able to lose balance intentionally, get an early foul on Wendell Green. And that's his first. West Virginia team that's won two of its last three, starting to catch its stride. Into the big man, this is Jimmy Bell Jr. Contested turnaround, that one falls through. That's a really tough shot. He loves to go over that left shoulder with the jump hook, but to do that over one of the top shot blockers in the country is a good sign for West Virginia early. Now here's his counterpart in the paint. That's Janai Bruin, that lefty hook that he goes to often. Is off to off that time. Well, right back to the big man with the right hand falls through again. That's a deep post touch, and Janai Broom needs to force him off that block just a little bit further and make that a longer jump hook. Auburn has won a bunch of games on the road this year. Matter of fact, they've won four. This is no doubt their toughest road environment that it's going to play in this season. There's Jalen Williams with a close range look. They love to get him the ball right in that area. It's just a screener step in. It's a very simple play, but Auburn has such success with it time and time again. Meanwhile, this is Mitchell to drive a kick. Plenty of paint touches you would expect in this game. Both of these teams, they hammer the paint, get to the free throw line. Like Alan Flanagan draws the foul, headed to the free throw line for a pair. Outstanding job by Flanagan of fronting the post. He got caught on the switch with Bell Jr., but down to discourage the post entry pass. At the line for Auburn, Alan Flanagan to shoot two. And so Flanagan heads to the free throw line. So he's the senior from Little Rock, Arkansas. He's a veteran. 
has been back in the starting lineup of late. Matter of fact, this is his fifth straight start. A little bit of a roller coaster career due to some injuries and trying to get back 100% healthy. What himself last year, but starting to play with played in a long time in an Auburn uniform. Bruce Pearl, there he is, ninth season as the Auburn head coach. So. Auburn has only been in this building one other time previously. The last time that happened, Pearl was a 24-year-old assistant at Stanford. Yeah. It's been a while, yeah. back in the 80s. Yeah. Well, he was also in this building as a commentator in my seat with the headset yeah. on. I'm glad he got back into coaching. Left, uh, left some opportunities available for, for guys like myself. Yeah. But the success by Auburn under Bruce Pearl is nothing short of amazing. And just adjust to his personnel. A little bit bigger team this year. Not the... High octane tempo, three point shooters, but they still find a way to win. The reigning SEC champs are at, they're near the top of the conference. Broom lost it, ball back to the Mountaineers. Well, Broom's had some good touches down low. He's been a little bit off balance. His first attempt, he was fading, that time leaning a little bit too much, expecting the contact. Just be patient, go up strong. Patience is one of the great skills that he has down low, a little bit rattled early. I mean, Dean, how important is just the physicality factor in this game today? Well, yeah, you got to be prepared for a fight anytime you go against the Bog Huggins coach team. After the Stevenson miss, Flanagan push it. Pulls up, wants the three. That one's down and out. West Virginia, very efficient offense overall. This is Emmett Matthews Jr. Hits the mid -range. With a very balanced offense as well. When you look at West Virginia, you don't sit there and say, this is the one guy we have to stop. They got several guys capable of getting 10 to 12 points a game. Yeah, they got four that average double figures of scoring. Broom, plenty of touches early on. Push shot, not that time. And he's frustrated after a couple of misses in the early minutes. So Auburn just one of five, make it one of six from the floor to start. Matthews down from beyond the arc. Auburn just had its five-game win streak snapped a couple of days ago. Lost at home against Texas A&M. Green lost it. There's that ball pressure that he must expect at times today. Stevenson sticks the fadeaway. He's got great balance on his shot. He gets in there, plays off two feet, does Stevenson. He can make it from three. He can hit the mid-range as well. Five-point lead early for West Virginia. They're four of eight. Broom, middle of the paint, back out to Green for three. Stevenson, the aggressive attack. And now back to Kedrian Johnson. Mitchell, one dribble, goes up with the left, got it. This is a guy that's really difficult in the pose. He's a right-hand player, but when he gets it down low, he really favors using that left hand to finish. So already four different scores for West Virginia. Back to your point, it's a balanced attack. Williams now has a pair of buckets for the Tigers. I think Auburn's got to be pleased with the quality of the shots they're getting in the half court, but they got to convert more like they did there with Williams. Yeah, just two of eight from the floor. Nice cut. This is Johnson to the bucket and the foul. Johnson! So Kedrian Johnson has one more when we return. West Virginia couldn't ask for a better start to begin the challenge. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Continental Tire, the smart choice in tires. Now, this year, folks have been able to uh, reference there's, there's one newly minted Hall of Famer walking around Morgantown these days. This weekend, uh, you got a pair of them. Charles Barkley, Sir Charles is in town. He was the guest of honor at Bob Huggins' annual fish fry. It's a fish fry that raises proceeds for cancer research, and it benefits the WVU Cancer Institute. Yeah, so he's in town. He's got a front row seat. The tie-in couldn't have worked out perfectly. His team is here. 
Yeah, not only did he help raise money for Bob Huggins, I'm pretty sure he helped raise uh, some revenue for Keckler Sports Bar and Grill last night. <laughs> yeah. As you and I were doing some pregame prep, of course. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, there were some people there, but as Charles <laughs> Barkley walked in, I feel like all of Morgantown started to show up as people text each other of the uh, Barkley watch here in Morgantown. So what a generous, awesome guy to dedicate his time for Coach Huggins, of course, with the respect that he has for him as foundation, and then to be here to support Bruce Pearl. But how generous he is with everybody that comes up to him asking for an autographed picture, treats them all with such kindness and somebody I, I really admire. Yeah, I don't think the uh, Auburn affiliation bothers folks around town. He's, he's just showing on the big screen here to the loud ovation. We will talk to Charles in a few minutes. Yeah, we were wonder if, wondering if we were going to be able to get a hold of him. And we turned last night and say, well, we can just ask him yeah, if he wants to join right, us. Yeah. There he is. It, it was kind of weird <laughs> me asking him after your 17th selfie. With him, but, you know. West Virginia by eight, few minutes in. First of 10 challenge games. Late shot clock triple for Katie Johnson. He had to hoist that one up. Chris Moore off the bench as well into the game, but he gives it away. That's a backboard violation. So ball back to West Virginia. West Virginia has a habit of turning people over, not in the live ball variety, but that one just self-inflicted by Auburn. Careless pass. Yeah, West Virginia top 50 in the country in terms of how often it turns its opponents over. I mean, that is always a staple of Bob Huggins coach teams. Mountaineers have made three in a row. Four, make it five different scorers already for this WVU team. Johnson nearly stumbled out of bounds. Ball back to Auburn. I mean, that's as good of an effort you can have in the half court defense. Let's look at the ball pressure by Wendell Green, and he forces him into the paint. Cardwell builds a wall, and then the hub. I mean, that's what you clip and show your team and say, this is the effort we need on that end of the court. I mean, we, these are two physical, hard-playing teams, especially on the defensive end. Another giveaway that's back-to-back. -back. Stevenson attacks. He's fouled. Winds up in the first row. There's a pile-up down there. And Moore is whistled for the personal. Well, West Virginia says, anything you can do, we can do better. How about the rotation on that? You want to try to hit the big man in the middle, but terrific rotation. The only thing Stevenson did right here was not just hoisted at the rim where he could have been at the free throw line with two shots. Instead, fouled on the pass. Stevenson, 76%, or part of his goes for about 13 a game. Off the inbound, just bounces out. And Cardwell rips the rebound down. Wendell Green going to be dealing with a lot of length. This is Leo Burke in the corner, buries the three. That hard hedge by West Virginia. Good job by Green hitting the middle. Dylan Cardwell just makes himself available, finds the shooter in the corner where Leo Borman has earned his opportunity, and he has kept it since being inserted into this rotation. Yeah, the senior from Birmingham. He's earned the trust of Bruce Pearl. Johnson bluffs the three. Stevenson fires over the zone. Book it. Well, and that's one of the issues is Auburn wants to play a little bit of zone, force them from deep, but they don't have big guards. You can shoot over the top. Stevenson takes advantage. Stevenson about 35% from deep this year. Nice lob that time. Wendell Green, the very flashy distributor, hits Cardwell. He just shows you there that he's got a bag that you can't check in or you can't fit in an overhead. you got to check that thing in. Wendell Green in between the legs with the lob. He loves some Kyrie Irving. Yeah, he had the, a little bit there. Had the 12 assist game last week against South Carolina. Likes to be the passer. West Virginia by six. Johnson, aggressive attack. Offensive foul. The very emotional Dylan Cardwell. He takes that one. Ball back to the Tigers. All right, he's, he's stopping by when we return. We'll talk to the Hall of Famer about his time in Morgantown next. West Virginia by six in our first challenge game. And you know, I, I've, I've said this year uh, for, 
For the first time, you've had one Hall of Famer in this building this year. Well, now we got two in the house today. <laughs> Charles Barkley is here with us, of course. Uh, Charles, first off, thanks for taking the time to join us here. No we problem. Got to, we got to start with Bob Huggins. He gets a hold of you right at the Hall of Fame induction last summer. He says, hey, I'm hosting a fish fry. Can you be our honorary guest? How did it go last night? How were the eats? How was well, the event? Well, everything was fabulous last night. I think we had, he said, 2,600 people. Man, the, the Mountaineer Nation showed up for Coach Huggins. You know, I got a lot of love and respect for Coach. He's the only reason I'm here. And then I got a chance to see my uh, Auburn Tigers play. That makes it even more special. But shout out to the Mountaineer Nation, man. They were fabulous last night. I think they raised a couple million dollars. Yeah. And uh, hey, I do anything for Huggy. They sold it out for the first time, thanks to you. And where does that generosity come from? I see you posing with every fan. You never get irritated, and, and you're so charitable. Well, I didn't say that. <laughs> where does that come from? <laughs> well, you know what? Number one, it's part of the gig. Uh, but, you know, first of all, you can't take yourself that serious. You know, you played basketball for a living. Not like you're a teacher, a fireman, policeman, or somebody who's in an armed service. You know, people who've got a real job. So that, that goes with the territory. You talked about earlier in your career how Moses Malone helped you understand how to receive criticism and take it. What's your advice to these young players today in the social media era where after they get the game, they're going to search your name on Twitter and everything else? Well, first of all, they should stay off social media. <laughs> I, I'm anti-social media. Yeah. But the first thing, you know, every criticism, just because some clown on the Internet call you something, that don't make it true. But... There are criticisms. The first thing I learned from Moses and Doc, you have to ask yourself if it's from the coach, somebody like that, it's a criticism fair. That's the first thing. You can't get mad every time because, you know, these kids consider coaching and criticism, they're the same thing. They're not the same thing. Right. So, yeah, we got we, I think we got a hand full today. Uh, <laughs> we got our hands full today. Hey. Yeah, thoughts on the Tigers' performance. So this is your first Auburn game you experienced in person this year. Well, you know, it's, it's, we got to make some shots. We've only made one shot outside the lane. I've said before, it's going to come down to guard play how successful our season are. And uh, we haven't made but one shot outside the lane. I think Bartram uh, yeah, hit the shot that's three in the corner. Uh, I don't like the pace of the game, uh, to be honest with you. I think we got to find a way to speed it up to get easier shots. Because this team is really good defensively. They're long and athletic. Uh, they're a lot bigger in person uh, than I saw them looking at them on, on, on tape. I uh, mean, they're long and athletic. And tell you what, this boy here is a handful. That's Stevenson. He's, he's got a little edge to him. Yeah, he's got some edge. And, uh, and, 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 and I tell you, he's a, he's a clear and present danger. Uh, I like his swag, too. As a player, would you rather hit a big shot in front of your home fans and get them ignited or a big shot on the road and silence them? Well, you know what? That's a great question. Ain't nothing better than one. Oh, they call it the other way. Offensive foul. Yeah, that was a close one right there. I, there's nothing better than shutting up the home crowd. Especially, like, you know, these West Virginia fans, they're unbelievable. Not just today, but, you know, from through history, this has always been a tough place to play Morgantown in football or basketball. So there's nothing better than going on the road to a hostile environment. But you have to play with great poise. You can't have turnovers. you got to rebound the ball. I was talking about that last night. Those are the two most important stat stats when you're on the road, turnovers and rebounding. Yeah, your plus minus is very good right now. Well, <laughs> yeah. Hey, on the road, you, 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 you get the crowd will help you a lot at home. But on the road, it's just a the, you know, the five to ten guys who are going to be on who, you know, on the squad, who gonna, the five out there in the bench, you guys, have, you don't get room for error on the road. That's why you have to play not perfect, but you can't turn the ball over and you can't kill on the board, and you got to shoot the ball well. Yeah. What can you say about the sustained success that Bruce Pearl's been able to have at Auburn, not traditionally known as a basketball school? Well, I love our coach. I know we're, I know we're never going to get out coached. He's one of the best in-game coaches I've ever been around. Same thing with Coach Huggins, but he's one of the best in-game coaches. This is a big shot right here. Katie yeah. Johnson, another yeah. look from deep. Yeah. Alice, some work on the offensive glass, though. Well, you, you, if, if you ain't making shots, you better get some offensive rebounds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> plenty of opportunities yes, for it. But, you know, we got a great, two great coaches here today. But I love our coach, and we're never going to get out-coached. Well, usually the man with the, the, the headset on the Auburn radio broadcast is your old coach, Sonny Smith, from way back in the day. What what led you to Auburn? Uh, they sucked, uh, to be honest with you. 
I want because I tell all these kids, if you want an education, you get an education anywhere. But the number one thing you look at when you go into a school is playing time. And, I, and it, it, it turned out to be the best decision of my life because I got to play right away. Right. If like I love a lot of these kids, you know, especially with this stupid ass transfer portal we got going on in America today. You know, wait, you knew the quarterback or the guy was good. Why would you go to school and you know there's a great player already there? Yeah. I always thought these kids, I said, yo, man, you got to understand something. That's the first time you're going to leave home. If you go to college, don't get to play. Of course, college is going to be brutal. and It's not going to be no fun, any fun, excuse me. So when I, I was looking at Alabama, Auburn, UAB, UAB was my first choice. And I looked at Alabama and I went to Auburn. They weren't very good, and I wanted to play. And, that, and, uh, that, it, and it turned into the best decision ever. Your description of the transfer portal sounds a lot like your description of the NBA load management issue. Right it's amazing. You, 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 can, you yeah. can make four to fifty million dollars in rest. <laughs> you, you, you can't play basketball three or four days a week. Can you imagine that? These guys act like they still meal workers. Yeah. Like, yeah I, don't, I, don't, I don't think anybody is turning down this game or yeah, the opportunity yeah, to sit yeah. out this one. Yeah. I'm like, come on, man. You guys are making. I could see. Like, I'm so old, we flew commercial. These guys got <laughs> private planes. They got private planes. They got the best nutrition. They got the best doctors in the world. They make $50 million, and they can't play basketball four days a week. Well, you're kind of fly the, the, the private jet into Morgantown for the weekend, of course, in town to see your friend Bob Huggins. But while we take a time out, appreciate Thanks. the time. Thanks no for problem. joining us Thanks for a few minutes. Thanks for having minutes. me. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having so, me, guys. West Virginia by seven inside the Coliseum. Huge day of games. This is the 10th and final SEC Big 12 Challenge. Our signature matchups coming up later today. Top 10 battle in Knoxville, Texas, and Tennessee. And then Kansas has to head to Lexington on a three game losing skid. Two amazing matchups there. You got a dynamite score of Marcus Carr for Texas against the best defense of the country in the Tennessee Vols. I think last year, Tennessee was a little tight with the Rick Barnes reunion. They wanted to win it so bad for their coach. I expect them to play loose and better in this one. And then two weeks ago, Kansas, Kentucky, it was, hey, Kansas is looking like the defending national champ and they could possibly repeat. Kentucky has hit rock bottom. What a difference a couple weeks makes. Kansas now losing three straight. Kentucky finding their rotation, their lineups, and they're playing for one another on their way to a four-game win streak with a huge opportunity at Rupp Arena tonight. And, and no doubt would be their signature win of the season to this point. And that's what the challenge gives you. It gives you the opportunities. It's so unique, right? It pops up in the middle of conference play. Last couple of years, the SEC has won it. Now, overall, the Big 12 has got four wins compared to the SEC's three. So is uh, the SEC going to retain it? Look, we know the gauntlet that the Big 12 is this year and every year. Johnson going to the free throw line. Yeah, when this Big 12 SEC challenge started, it was much more of a, an opportunity for the SEC to try to prove that they could hold par with the Big 12. And now, in recent years, it's been much more of an equal opportunity for both clubs as the SEC has really rebuilt their brand of basketball with a ton of NCAA tournament teams and resume opportunities for both conferences now. Stevenson checks back in for West Virginia. He's got a game high eight. Yeah, they got to figure out a way to keep him in check. We talked about the balance of this West Virginia team. And their offense is a little better than their defense, which is unusual for a Bob Huggins team. But we're starting to see just how balanced they are because yep. for those that hadn't seen Auburn play before, they hang their hat on the defensive end. This is very unexpected for West Virginia to be shooting the way they are in this one early. Yeah, you can see the difference. The Mountaineers 10 of 17 from the floor. Get a couple of inside shots from the mid-range at the rim. Offensive rebound down to Stevenson. So he has been impressive to start, and he's got 10. Stevenson. Where he came from on that offensive rebound was just all effort and grit, and then he shows you how he can finish with his left above the smaller defender as well. Robert, cold from deep. Stevenson again. No, that one long. Now offensive board is headed to the free throw line. 
Well, you look at Stevenson and how he crashes the offensive glass. He's going to come from the right side of your screen and just out smaller, out, out muscle the smaller opponent. One dribble says you're not going to bring a double. Mouse in the house. Let me show you my left. Listen, we, we just talked to Charles Barkley. He's in the house tonight. I mean, there, this West Virginia team rebounded like the man on the glass. I tell you. So it's the senior bell at the line from Saginaw, Michigan. It's only 56% at the stripe. However, it converts the first. Now West Virginia, a thriving start to this one. Well, I think if you're Coach Pearl and the Auburn Tigers, you see that West Virginia has only taken five threes out of their 20 field goal attempts. I think that zone was more in place to try to make West Virginia settle a little bit more from deep. They have not been successful in doing that so far. Stevenson sits down. Yeah, he's pointing at his neck. After he hit that fall away a few moments ago, he started grabbing his neck. There's a little collision after the shot. Another giveaway. You just got to deliver that pass. Broom is open on the short roll. It's an easy completion. Turnover instead. That's six down for Auburn on the drive. This is Joe Toussaint tie off the glass. West Virginia by 14, and it stretched it to its largest lead of the early afternoon. Stevenson getting checked out there beyond the bench. So that's where he fell. Yeah, he got hit by Dylan Cardwell in the back. Not intentionally, but as he landed. Dylan Cardwell's a big boy to take a blow unexpectedly from behind. He's going to go through some of the mobility checks, it looks like, back there. Flanagan, an aggressive drive. And with the left hand, he converts. Yeah, I love how he really shielded off the defender and threw his shoulder into him to create space and finish at the rim. The difficulty for Auburn has been on this end. West Virginia, a sterling 57% shooting from the field. Plus, they're perfect at the line. Zep Jasper, and he's the noted on-ball defender. He ties up Kobe Johnson, That's Auburn a basketball. Terrific job by Jasper of not playing soft in the zone. You still have your man-to-man -man principles and can pressure the ball. Well done there by 12. Well, a full stat line for Stevenson early on. So that is a very quick break on the bench. Ten points, four boards, three assists. Going to work on Toussaint. That one-legged fadeaway is long. This West Virginia team, Dane, to your point, very efficient offensively this year. So they got off to that slow start in Big 12 play. That can happen. They lost five in a row, but have since rebounded and won two out of three, including 10 days ago against a ranked TCU team. Toussaint lost it. Jasper ties him up again. So this will remain here with West Virginia this time. And Jasper's on-ball pressure has really been the difference the past couple possessions for West Virginia. Give them a little taste of their own medicine if you're Auburn. Quick reminder, top 20 women's hoops matchup coming up. That's Notre Dame and NC State Sunday. Tomorrow, 3 Eastern right here on ESPN. Also streaming live on the app. Five seconds to shoot for West Virginia. How much time? Mitchell to Stevenson. He has to hoist. Another from deep. Just incredible, man. I told you this guy wakes up ready to ball. He doesn't need an energy drink, a coffee, and this crowd is loving it. Flanagan steps into the mid-range, down and out. Auburn having trouble keeping up with Stevenson, feeling it. It's the roller. This is Bell. Tucson, open 4-3. Cardwell soars in for the board. Boy, West Virginia's shot selection has been pretty good. They've hit three triples. Flanagan draws the whistle on the attack. That'll be the second on Mitchell. How about Eric Stevenson? Fourth school in four seasons said, it doesn't matter where I'm at. That brim is looking big to me. This kid is a stone cold baller.
Alright guys, 356 to go. First half challenge game number one. And it's West Virginia by 15. They have opened up large advantage in the opening half. So Dane, they are scoring against Auburn's man. They're scoring against the zone as well. I mean, this is a Mountaineer team. You can see some intensity and passion out on that floor. Yeah, and I go back to their practice yesterday. It was unusual for me to see them start with almost organized pickup play. They played five on five as players. The coaches sat back quiet, just let the players chirp, talk trash, compete. You know, and they had a set amount of time and losing team had to run. And I asked Coach Huggins, he said, you know, I did that back at Cincinnati. My players loved it. It gets their competitive mindset and juices flowing before we actually go into drills and everything else. And you're seeing it carry over here to where a guy like Eric Stevenson and the rest of his guys, if you compete in practice, you'll be ready to compete under the big stage right now. And West Virginia has come out ready to play and knocking shots down and taking care of the basketball, which was a key as well. I mean, is that not a nice incentive? Send the losing team to the line, run some sprints? Hey, if, as a player, if you're like, hey, first 20 minutes of practice, we're going to hoop. Yeah, I'll take that. Let's go. <laughs> well, West Virginia has come out firing. Chris Moore rising to wipe that one away. A lot of the Cardwell is taken. Uh, Cardwell hanging on the rim to avoid the collision with Bell, who took the pass away, and then the whistle. Well, you like them running the floor there, and this lob was just thrown a little bit short, even though it was in transition. Oh, we got to get that thing. If you're going to throw a lob, it's got to be over 10 feet. That was about a nine-foot pass. Needed to be up there. That's an odd way to pick up a foul. Yeah, hang it on the rim, but then on the swing back, collided with Bell. So that sends the big man to the free throw line. And that's seven turnovers now for Auburn. And when you don't have that offensive firepower, you're limited a little bit from deep. You just can't have those empty possessions. So you know that's going to be a point of emphasis that they've been able to get some decent looks down low and from three when they don't turn it over. To your point, though, just 38% from the floor, a little shaky from deep. So Bell has hit all three of his free throws. Uh, he is West Virginia's leading rebounder. Gives him about six points a game, so he's already surpassed that average in this first half. And he's one of the many first-year transfers. There's eight of them on the roster, and it just feels like the trust, when you bring in so many new players, the trust is growing at this point. This is that natural meshing point. Green sticks the three. They so that's his first basket. Yeah. Wendell Green has been shooting below 30% from deep this season. He's better than that, and they got to have him get hot. But if you're Bruce Pearl, you say, guys, we got to have consecutive stops. We're not just going to shoot our way back into this game. We got to defend our way back into it. Can they wipe it back to maybe a less than a 10-point deficit? Kobe Johnson picks up the dribble. Stevenson. Closed down nicely that time by Green. On the step back. Oh, that is a difficult shot fading to his left. He's got 15. And he wants the ISO. He's like, look, if you're going to play a guy 5'11 on me, I'm going to take him off the bounce. Chris Moore came over with the good help. Just better offense by Stevenson. Fifth-year senior from Lacey, Washington. Pouring it in in the first half. Pressure up top once again. Cardwell fires back out to Green. Launches. And Moore saves it. So a new 20. Auburn quick to attack the basket. Flanagan got it. And a foul. And a really good job by Dylan Cardwell, the big man, just being a facilitator. Being at that high post and then off of the loose ball situation. Cardwell knows his role. And he's thinking shooter right away. And that's a tough call against West Virginia. Felt like he was straight up. Flanagan finishes through contact nonetheless. We got 14,000 in the building. Most of them disagree. So Auburn once down by as many as 15 earlier. If you're a player out there, you're almost looking at the score going, you know what, can we just get it back to single digits maybe before the half? Two tournament caliber teams battling to start the day. Stevenson fouled on the three. 
he is a threat today. He is, and that time they give him the ball screen, and Cardwell comes up with a strong contest, but it's got to be straight up and down. If you go from point A to point B and don't give that shooter somewhere to land or get any contact, that's an easy call for the officials. That's a third foul on Dylan Cardwell, by the way. So, Dane, you mentioned it. Uh, last year at South Carolina, his season ended against this Auburn team. He's, uh, he's basically hit all the times, uh, just about a time zone. South Carolina and West Virginia the last couple years. A couple seasons ago, he was at Washington, started his first two at Wichita State. I think it's safe to say he likes hard coaching. <laughs> See that resume? <laughs> Most recently, Frank Martin. Bob Huggins is like, if you can play for Frank, you can play for me. West Virginia has sustained a double-digit lead for much of this first half. 18 points for Stevenson in the first. He's blitzing this team. Green has been bothered at the top of the key much of this first half. Very confident playmaker, just one basket. He's given it away a couple of times. Four to shoot, this is Jasper. Off-balance runner, no. On the floor, there's James Akakwo. Up to Stevenson, coming up on a minute to play in the first. Jasper making Flanagan got a piece of that, the hustle to go after it. However, it's West Virginia basketball. Chaotic sequence, the Mountaineers keep it. Uh, I think the effort's been there by Auburn. I mean, the difference in this game is really one player. It's Stevenson for West Virginia. He's got 18, and they've got to find an answer at halftime, but it's a critical one-minute stretch here. Try to see if you can't cut in this lead a little bit, just establish a few stops here, get back-to-back -back stops, maybe a bucket, go into just with a little bit of momentum into the half instead of having your head down. Stevenson with 18, feeling it, but turns it over. This is Green around Tucson to the rack. The follow that time by Flanagan. He flushes. And what a timely steal by Wendell Green. He averages over two a game. Very opportunistic, like a cornerback safety. He will pick you off. And a great job by Flanagan Trey on the play. Big reason why that Auburn defense has been rugged at times. Very stout. They got some pesky guards that will turn you over. Timeout. Bob Huggins. 41.7 to go in the first. It's a 12-point game. 41.7 to go, first half inside W. Coliseum. West Virginia, Dane, has had a double-digit lead for much of this first half. They got out to that quick start, just slowly started to build its advantage, led by as many as 15, while Eric Stevenson is red hot. On the other side, the playmaking guard you referenced for Auburn, right off the top, Wendell Green. Just one bucket. And he needs a little help from his friends, but as our yep. guest Charles Barkley has said many times, at home, your role players can win you games. On the road, your stars have to win you games. And right now, Auburn's top players need to produce a little bit more, take some of the pressure off. But right now, it's too easy to look at their offensive woes. It's on this end of the court where West Virginia is just knifing them up no matter what defense Auburn is in. Auburn chasing several players around the rim. So the latest to earn some free throws is James Oconquo. He's a sophomore from England. Only picked up the game of basketball a few years ago. Grew up a tennis star. Uh, Bob Huggins loves the effort and attitude that he has brought to the table of late. I don't know that they win that Texas Tech game without him. Yeah. I mean, he was huge with his effort on the glass, rim protection. Bright future for him. That was the first West Virginia miss at the line. They, they've just been ultra efficient everywhere. Now 11 of 12 at the stripe. That's a great point. They're one of the best in the country at getting to the free throw line. So if you're Auburn, you got to defend without fouling. Toughest road environment of the year for Auburn. Hands down. Two shot this time. Bothers Green. Diving. Sacrificing the body. Up ahead with the inside. A combo. Back to the line. Well, this is where you're thinking you get the last shot at worst. And instead, your worst nightmare for Auburn. Live ball turnover, transition bucket, and one. Big time play by West Virginia with those active hands defensively and running the court. 
Boy, they have really bothered the Auburn guard. So Tucson gives West Virginia its largest lead of the afternoon. Gary Maxwell just stopped play, and I believe his signal was the clock did not start and right Bruce when Pearl. the ball was in. <laughs> Bruce Pearl frustrated. I don't blame him because yeah. you got yourself in a transition situation. You're going to get a high ball screen for Green now. Press up 94 feet. Tough break there for Auburn. Yeah, and I was glancing up. Maybe a second had gone by before the clock started. Well, anywho, here we go again. Take two. Two seconds. Green lost it. And West Virginia. Boy. Poured it in in that first half, including that man, Eric Stevenson. Overwhelming performance, 18 points in half number one. West Virginia by 16. Now time for the Jeep halftime show. Let's go to Kevin Connors in the studio. Kevin, West Virginia. Welcome back to the SEC Big 12 Challenge presented by Continental Tire. Right off of the Monongahela River, we are back inside WVU Coliseum. West Virginia with a statement first half, 16-point lead. He is Dane Bradshaw, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. I mean, offensively, it felt like West Virginia had its way often in that first. They overwhelmed Auburn at times. Yeah, they really did, and I think a lot of it was just making some of those contested shots over the smaller guards the same way we saw last game. Texas A&M able to do, take advantage of that. And then defensively, West Virginia able to really disrupt Auburn with some of those live ball turnovers. The Tigers must take care of the basketball. With all that said, there is one guy and one guy only you must try to shut down this second half, and that's Eric Stevenson, who was just electric in that first half. Somebody tried to shut even contested jumpers. Yeah, that was a, a brilliant one. He hit three triples, three from two-point range. He was perfect at the free throw line. Couple of rebounds as well. But this is a streaky shooting West Virginia team. And so if I'm Bruce Pearl, I'm telling my team, guys, do not panic. Keep contesting shots. See if they will shoot themselves out of it. Don't turn the ball over. Chip away at this lead because this is not an Auburn team like previous Bruce Pearl teams that are capable of those huge runs with a lot of shooters all spread out. So it's going to take time, be more of a methodical comeback as opposed to some of those 10 to 0 run type runs you've seen in the past from Bruce Pearl teams. First of 10 challenge games. The SEC has won back to back. However, the Big 12 has the better overall record. 10th and final challenge today. Well, there's a great look at a high percentage one at that for Jalen Williams. So the senior has eight. Gets Auburn back on good footing here to start the second. Good things happen when two gets a paint touch. Terrific play out of the half. By Bruce Pearl. Oh, another three is buried. This time it's Keatry and Johnson who knocks it down for deep. Good shot there by Johnson. They just lost a shooter. You got to contest. Now paint touch for Janai Broom. Had a quiet first half. Got off to a little bit of a slow start, but it's only a matter of time, you would think, before the junior gets rolling. That's his first basket. Better balance on that jump hook. I thought he was a little bit off balance in the first half. He's got to guard the big man, Jimmy Bell Jr. He's barging right into his chest. Flips it up with the left hand, rebound to Williams. That's exactly how you want to play him. Turn him away from that left shoulder, make him shoot on the uh, offhand. Williams back into paint again. He likes that little turnaround with the left, left it short. And this is Stevens back the other way with the 18 points. Only the fifth time these two teams have met one another. The last time was 16 years ago. They've split the first four meetings. Trey Mitchell, a baseline jumper. That's down and out. So take a peek at 15-point halftime leads for West Virginia against top 15 opponent the last 25 seasons. It doesn't happen that often. There's Green to the basket, count, count it, and the foul. Well, it's going to take a special effort by Auburn to come back from this much on the road and some good offensive possessions early. That time, that's the easiest drive Wendell Green Jr. is going to see the entire night. Defensive breakdown, got the and one.
He has not had many looks at or around the rim. But this is what he does really well. He gets to the free throw line, draws a whistle, draws the whistle from time to time. So these are his first free throws. They ask so need his leadership. They need him to distribute the ball, score the ball, be a pest on the defensive end. In their losses, he's averaging right at four turnovers. He had four in that first half alone. He's got to put up a donut in that quarter category if they're going to have a comeback. 12-point game. Oh, look at this. Emmett, Will Emmett Matthews part right to the basket. Breaks a little bit of that pressure. Flanagan open on the other side for three. Well, we saw a lot better defense from both teams in the first half. Guys are losing shooters, not stopping the ball. If you're Auburn, you're getting what you want on offense. You have to lock down on this end of the court, identify shooters, and they're comfortable staying in this zone, daring West Virginia to beat them from the outside. Saw a little bit of that at times in the first. Back to Matthews, left hand attack. Bounces out, he was halfway down. Everything would go through. Auburn on the move. They can get it back to single digits with a basket here. Flanagan tied up. It's a jump ball. Possession arrow gives it back to the Mountaineers. That was Stevenson who tied him up. Stevenson, there you, there's the example of just that vocal leadership that he brings to the court. He's always talking. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> you just got to make sure it's productive conversation. It's caught him, cost him a couple times this season, but you'd rather have him on your team than on the other team. Johnson lines it up. No. Bell gets his hands on it, but then it gave it away. Bounced that off of Matthews' leg. All in four or five from the field to start. So they couldn't have asked for a better beginning. Okonkwo wipes that attempt away, but then out of bounds. Auburn retains it after the giveaway. It has not been a pretty first few minutes, like I mentioned with some of the defensive breakdowns. Sloppy play there, but if you're Auburn, you got to be really happy. A chance to get this thing to single digits on the 16 minutes on that. And a turnover. That's a quick slant of hand from Jimmy Bell. Great active hands there. The back door was open. 16-point halftime lead for West Virginia. Still maintains an 11-point advantage. Jasper guarding Stevenson, Matthews, High Yorker. Auburn coming back the other way. If you're West Virginia, you can't take the bait all the time. Turn it down. Okay, back to a single-digit ball game here. Brew with his second in half number two. Terrific rim run. Great job by Auburn. But if you're West Virginia, turn down a three or two. Try to attack the middle. A little low in the building. On the baseline, Matthews, he's demanded some shots in this second half, does draw the whistle. And so all of a sudden, Auburn has this thing back to single digits. It's a nine-point advantage for West Virginia. First challenge game of the day, tighten up a bit. Here we go, partner. The day is just getting started. Buckle up. And some amazing storylines and all that, all those matchups. You got the Tennessee, Texas, where you feel like the winner could be a one seed. The loser drops to a two. And then you got Kansas, Kentucky, who have played a little role reversal the past couple weeks as Kentucky tries to continue their streak. And Alabama. How about the freshman Brandon Miller averaging 19 and a half, most by any freshman in the country. Yep. And what I love about him is his composure. Yes, he's a dynamite shooter, but if you got a guy denying him all game long and maybe he's off a little bit, he does not hang his head. They have been challenged early in this season with some big-time road environments. He is not going to get scared of the moment and just hangs in there and a guy you can rely on in the clutch. And Nate Oates has good boys playing some ball this year. They've won nine in a row. We, uh, we had our friend visited with our good friend Charles Barkley earlier. I think he's going to be breaking down Brandon Miller film next year. I would say so, yes. <laughs> Poor God conclusion. It's back in Morgantown, though. Auburn is trying to mount a comeback here. Williams draws the whistle and is headed to the free throw line. Bruce Pearl on the staff. They like an aggressive Jalen Williams. You mentioned who are the, the players going to be that can step up around Wendell Green and take some of the pressure off of his shoulders. It's going to be several guys. We've seen Alan Flanagan step up. Wendell Green's got to make buckets. This guy at the line, Jalen Williams, on that last attempt. 
caught the defender off guard. Because he was going to his right and rose up with his left, that's a difficult type of contest. And he got the whistle. So you got to be really pleased if you're Bruce Pearl. You've slowed this game down a little bit. You've identified shooters on the other end and just chipped away at this. Auburn had only gotten to the free throw line or shot eight in that first half. And now they'll be a bit more aggressive attacking the rim in the early minutes of the second half. Stevenson, there's a little too much space for him, and he makes you pay. Yeah, I mean, they closed down on Stevenson as if he was a 25% shooter. Hey, that's public enemy number one. Make him put it on the deck. Get out there with high hands. Hey, he's coming up on a season high. Went for 22 earlier this year. And his third 20-point game of the year. A perfect time to get red hot. Four to shoot. Shot clock training. Green got hit. And then Antonio Petty says on the way up. Bob Huggins is the spark. Three free throws coming. And I think it's a good call. You can't put your hand in the cookie jar if you're Johnson. You played terrific defense for that entire possession until the very end. And that was a point of emphasis in practice yesterday. They said, hey, Wendell Green Jr. is not shooting the ball great from three contest but he likes to draw fouls. Do not get caught. And that time, the veteran Wendell Green Jr. able to get the best of West Virginia. No one takes more free throws, Dane, in the SEC than right here, the 5'11 junior from Detroit. There's that little shuffle to his right on the line. I love this kid's story. He started his career at Eastern Kentucky. When he entered the transfer portal, it wasn't like he, his phone rang off the hook right away. He said, really, it took about two weeks for any Power 5 school. So, it's like he was texting and the bubbles weren't even popping up. Like nobody was texting back, but he hung in there, bet on himself, and Bruce Pearl believed in him. And he's certainly a guy you could say is the most valuable player to his team in the SEC. As he goes, so do the Auburn Tigers. He's got a big heart. You know, and he really peeled back the layers of what that, that period of time is like. He said, right, the first couple of weeks, I had a lot of mid-majors reaching out. Do I pull the trigger? Do I stay in the portal, wait for the bigger opportunity? And that's the decision you wrestle with. Ultimately, it's worked out for him. He has elevated his game of late. Those free throws now have Auburn back within nine. Jimmy Bell can't convert. Here come the Tigers. Once down 16, back within nine. This is Green now on the attack, finds Williams. Green lost her shoe, middle of the paint. Oh, yeah, he's, now he's putting it back on his left foot. And, yeah, that's an official's timeout with 12 seconds on the timer. It's the only thing that slows this guy down. Coach, I lost a shoe. It's been a while since these two teams last met. That was back in December of 2007. They've only met four times previously. We're starting to tighten up a little bit here, Dane. So here's what's happened lately for Auburn. It trailed by 16 at the break today. Allowed 45 points to West Virginia, just like it did a few days ago in its loss to Texas A&M. So it has faced a deficit similar to this one earlier this week. And hey, with Charles Barkley in the house, you got a little extra Auburn Tiger pride in the building. And having played for Bruce Pearl at Tennessee, I know his phrase to his team is do not allow your offensive struggles to dictate your defensive intent. That can happen from time to time. It's human nature. And I think right now, we talked about it after half. This is not an Auburn team that's just going to go on a 9-0 bang, bang, bang run with threes. I think methodically they've gotten stops on this end, gotten to the free throw line, gotten paint touches. So a recipe for success. And when Stevenson's in the game, it appears they're staying out of the zone. They want to stay man-to-man -man and shadow him. Just one field goal for West Virginia the last four minutes. This is Tucson coming off that career-high 22-point game a few days ago. Stevenson with a hand in his face, this time way off. Well, and you see the difference. Uh, before, he was able to rise up over a 5'11 guard, but with Auburn doing some switching, that time the rise up over a 6'8 Jalen Williams, not nearly as clean of a look at the basket. 18 first-half points for Stevenson. He's hit one triple, so he has 21.
Green drives right, high off the glass, tap back in by Broom. And sometimes that's their best offense, is they miss shot, create that offensive rebounding opportunity with the length that you have down low and a guy like Broom. Good job by Green getting to the rack. Seven point game. West Virginia looking for a spark now on this end. And this has kept the crowd out of it too, right? It's as quiet as we've heard. Stevenson indecisive in the air. Instead, he finds Tucson. Not that time. Tap back. So, Janai Broom was trying to tip it away from Bell. He'll ultimately get credit for the bucket. That's a big boy. Six foot ten, 285 down low. It's hard to push him out of the paint. Good job by Bell. Just staying active. Williams rises over the big man, got it. And that's their favorite play in this game, just simple screener, step in. They do a flex cut on the baseline, and then step, make yourself available for the ball. Now Williams has benefited from that today. He's got the 12 points, 5 of 8 from the floor. Seven-point lead for West Virginia. Looking for its second-ranked win this month. Three in the air for Matthews. That was a long two. It was a step inside the three-point arc, rather. Looks like they missed a chance to post up Stevenson on the smaller guard. Look at Green, reverse. Not that time. Could have went up with the left, it looked like. Instead, went around the other side of the basket. Tucson, a little stutter. Finds Bell. Easy to lay in. Penetration what? kills, and how about this little Hezzy? Whoop! What a dime there, and Bell making the most of his time in the paint. And one for the big fella. Jalen Williams for Auburn now has 12 points. Here's how Auburn's getting a lot of those paint touches. This is a little flex cut. Keep an eye on 22, he's going to cut and then just step in if you're two in orange. And that's an easy shot for him. He's practiced it a ton. For West Virginia, they're switching that and that's how Auburn's taking advantage. So if you're Bob Huggins and the Mountaineers, you have to say, if you're going to switch, fine, but switch with a purpose mm. and anticipate Auburn to step in right after that flex cut action. And Williams has benefited from that. He's got 12 points. In and what did Bruce Pearl say to us yesterday? Something like just that simple little play. It's exactly yeah. what Bruce said. Let's just keep it simple at times today. And it's something they benefited from. Yeah, that flex offense that he refers to as cutters is something he's been doing really his whole career since Dr. Tom Davis. He had it in Southern Indiana, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Tennessee. And it's been a successful play for him. And right now, Auburn's done a good job staying in this, having that breakdown on the last play. After that, Wendell Green missed layup as well. A couple possessions to go. They can ill afford any of those missed opportunities. How about Bell? He's got 13 points today, Dane. He's been impactful. Plus, he's bothered Janai Broom on this end. He's doubled his season average. Normally only goes for about six a game. Yeah, he's been really good to give West Virginia that balance. Scoring attack and presence down low. You got Donaldson and Katie Johnson now out there for Auburn with four seconds on the shot clock. Tucson got his foot out there. It's a kickball, and Auburn's going to have to hurry. And Katie Johnson's a guy that Auburn fans you know, have understood as kind of a momentum-changing type player. He can do some things that take away from your team, but he can make some big-time plays. See if Zero and Orange can't give him some of those energy hustle type plays as he can be the heartbeat for this team at times. Johnson rises, 4-3, right on cue, and a big one. His first field goal of the afternoon. Yeah, he's got to get his confidence going and his swagger back to this Auburn team. That should help. Auburn in the second half, 8 of 13 from the floor. And they, they have definitely shot better here after halftime. Patient possession. And a Looking for the cutter, that's Stevenson. Four to shoot with the left hand, left it short. Broom the rebound. This is Donaldson. In a hurry, and a wise decision to peel out. Nope, finds Broom underneath, got it. Well, that's an awesome play by Donaldson. As soon as the defense thinks you're going to go reset at midcourt, nope, start it back. 
Give himself the easy two down low with the spoon feed. Five point game again. Auburn hasn't been this close since around the midway mark of the first half. And Auburn daring some of these West Virginia players. They're keeping them open for a reason, saying you play one on one, not Stevenson. Two shot. That's a difficult shot. Bounces out. Matthews right there with the left. Bell got his hand on it. Instead, same situation. Donaldson hurrying. Flanagan. Offensive foul. Stevenson steps in to take the charge. Well, Stevenson knew Donaldson was trying to look for Flanagan. And let's see if he gets himself outside the restricted area. Good play by Stevenson. Anticipating that trailer pass. That's one where Donaldson, it's a tough one. Do, do you fake the pass and run into the guy or not? But that could be a huge play in this game to stop Auburn from getting at least to the free throw line. Yeah, perfect place, but he got position, was outside the arc. Five point lead for West Virginia as it continues to build momentum. Lost its first five Big 12 games in, since then. They've won two out of three, and they've led for the majority of this game. Trey Mitchell blocked by Broom. Johnson on the baseline, fumbled it, and then threw it back to West Virginia. Tucson puts it in. Tough break, they said Katie Johnson. Good position, which reset that shot clock to 20. And the open look, of course. Six triples now for West Virginia as a team. Johnson lost it on the way up. Bruce Pearl is asking for a foul. But instead, it's just last touch by West Virginia. Auburn inbounds underneath the hoop. Moore to the bench, and Williams checks back in for the Tigers. Folks around Morgantown know how difficult it is to play in this building. Sold out crowd. They've been loud at times. Auburn has been able to slice away at the 16-point halftime deficit. It's an eight-point game. Johnson trying to go one-on-one, -on -one, break it down. Stevenson flips back out to Donaldson, puts it in for three. His feet were ready, his hands were ready. That's how you prepare for a shot. Catch and stick. Donaldson giving the Tigers some big minutes in the second half. The off-balance pass from Johnson on the money. Stevenson, that's way You have to find him in the zone, and both guys got caught in the area instead of on a man. If the shooter comes up, you have to locate him. Donaldson on the pull-up. Berman trying to tie up West Virginia. Now Stevenson was very quick to react. Uh, Berman ties up to Sun, and possession arrow favors Auburn. Or rather, yeah, it's, a, it's a foul. foul. Yeah, it's a foul on Berman. Pardon me. That looked like a, a jump ball situation from my view as well. Good hustle by Berman. Call goes the other way. A little bit of zone now, right? If you're Auburn, you've fought so hard to keep this thing within striking distance, you can't get another double-digit deficit as time is not on your side. Must get a stop here. Less than eight to go, second half. First of our 10 challenge games. He's going to get off a good footing. Johnson with a steal. And the lay-in. Just what the doctor ordered for Auburn. This is a guy that's really been struggling. Been a key player for them last season early on. But now he's got his confidence rising. Auburn 65% from the field in his second half. <laughs> Stevenson covered. He finds Mitchell. Left hand dribble into Berman. That was knocked away. Jarred out by Donaldson. So it's West Virginia ball when we come back to Morgantown. 16 point deficit whittled down to six. WVU with the lead. West Virginia leads by six. 7.20 to go in the first of our bevy of signature challenge matchups. 
Six seconds to shoot for West Virginia on this end of the floor. Hey, Auburn has surged in this second half. They struggled to shoot in the first, gave it away one too many times, Dan. 65% from the floor in the second, so they have turned a 16-point deficit into just a six-point hole. After the Stevenson miss, Donaldson pushing again. And another key is they've kept West Virginia off the free throw line. They were dominated in the first half. And in the second half, just three of three. Auburn sticking with this lineup. Johnson, Donaldson, Berman. He's open again. No. Stevenson gets a piece of it, and Cockwell's in the right position. West Virginia, no doubt a tournament caliber team. Got off to that tough start in Big 12 play. They've won two and three since. Looking to take down another ranked team. Would be their second in 10 days. Toussaint fires the three. Way off that time. West Virginia, a little sluggish from deep in the second half. Now Auburn initiates its stuff. Janah Brewer was calling for it. Nice pass. Yeah, there it is. He finally gets the touch he wanted. <laughs> Sends that one into the first row. A lot of folks on the Auburn side saying, was that a goal 10? Was it on the way down? Instead, they're going to have to inbound with five to shoot. Uh, I mean, a great pass by Williams, but Okonkwo, who Ooh. you could argue have made a game-saving type block against Texas Tech, that time sends a message there to save two points. Auburn got exactly what they wanted, but 32 came flying in and said, no soup for you, Auburn. That was vicious. Broom, though, one dribble, puts it in, and the foul. Right back at you. you got to love the response by Broom. That says, no, sir. I might be in your house here in Morgantown, but this is my paint. Yeah, that one got Charles Barkley off his feet. And that's a tough place to take the ball out of bounds, right? Deep in that corner to get a bounce pass. Post feed, essentially. Well done by Auburn. Broom was calling for it all possession. Ultimately gets it. First attempt blocked out of bounds. And you see Auburn with the 18 second half points in the paint. Broom's free throw would get it back to a three-point game. What resiliency by Auburn on the road in this type of environment to be down so big at halftime and just slowly but surely climb your way back into the game, not only with the efficient offense, but defensive stops. Still got to keep an eye on Stevenson. Don't let him get off if you're Auburn. West Virginia led by as many as 17 in the first half. Here we go, one possession game. I just feel like they could post Stevenson on green. He, he likes the mid-range, can rise over the top. Now they got to improvise. Two seconds, knocked down, and with .8 seconds on the timer, West Virginia has to catch and shoot or throw something at the rim. They got a really good look last time for Stevenson popping to the corner. See what they draw up here. It looks like it's going to be a lob over the top, maybe to Mitchell. Mitchell calling for it. Toussaint triggers. Stevenson gets it off, but it's a shot clock violation. Missed everything. And the pressure beginning to bother West Virginia. It has the last few minutes in this second. Kedrian Johnson back in. Toussaint sits down. These two coaches have such great respect for one another. Bruce Pearl still recalls the time when he was at Southern Indiana, non-Division I school as the head man there. Bob Huggins invited him to a Cincinnati practice way back in the day. Look at Broome, another rim run. Yes! It's just good big on big action. When your four man can take you off the bounce, a dribble hand up to your five, you versatility of the bigs. And Auburn feeling like they can steal this one on the road. One point game. Broome into double figures with 11 now. Stevenson's pass inside was tipped away, though Flanagan gets whistled for the reach in. So that's the fifth team foul on Auburn this half. The first. 
It's capped off by our triple header today on ABC. It gets started with Doug at Sixers at 3, Knicks Nets at 5.30 then. The rivals, Lakers, Celtics at 8.30. Also streaming live on the app. There's Bell, swirls it in. Coach Hogan has talked about his concern of his team not being a very good passing team. That time a terrific interior bounce pass and a solid finish. That snaps Auburn 7-0 run. Heavyweight battle. Broom turns. Rebound down to Okonkwo. Good job by Bell pushing that post entry pass out about 10 feet away from the basket as opposed to that comfort zone. Five to eight. Matthews gave it to the wrong team. Now Johnson pushing, rises, lays it in, and the foul. Auburn's got a chance to tie it up when we come back. From 17 down, it's a one-point game with 3.59 to go in our first challenge game in Morgantown. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Continental Tire, the smartest choice in tires. How has Auburn erased a 16-point halftime deficit? Feed it to the big man, Dave. Well, how about Janai Broom with all 13 of his points coming in the second half? He's posted up. He's rebounded. He's run the court. He has been outstanding for the Auburn Tigers. You see the emotion there. The Moorhead State transfer, I'm not sure there's been a better impact newcomer in the SEC than this guy. If you see some guard skills to his game, we saw him do a dribble handoff with a big and take it off the bounce. This kid was five foot 11 as a freshman in high school. He played guard until he had a huge growth spurt year after year. Now at six foot 10, he's using those guard skills down low to own the paint. Two years ago when he was at Moorhead State, his team faced West Virginia in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Near double-double, they lost. Well, he's got a chance maybe to land a knockout punch today with the Auburn Tigers. After trailing by as many as 17, Auburn in the midst of a 9-2 run, and after the missed free throw, they got a chance to extend it. No, Flanagan stepped out. And so Paul back to West Virginia. Well, if you're West Virginia, you just got to play smarter basketball on this end of the court. Don't settle. And Coach Huggins talked to us about it. I mean, we saw back-to-back -back possessions, a great pass, and then a careless, inexplicable pass. So they've got to be sharp, no live ball turnovers. One point game. Stevenson, he's got an opening, fires, and he hits it. And a beautiful set call. That was a baseline drive, but he was never driving to the basket. It was a planned reverse pivot to the shooter coming off the screen. 27 for Stevenson. There's Williams. He's had that look all night. It converts again. Uh, screener step in. It's amazing how much it works. But if West Virginia's slipping, baseline cut, step, make yourself available, and that's money for Williams. West Virginia has never trailed. Was ahead by as many as 17 in the first. One possession game. Ran some good stuff on this end of the floor. Last time down into Stevenson's hand, starts to create. Into the corner, Tucson has to the rebound. He's a blur, lost his footing, and a foul called on Johnson. KD Johnson has been phenomenal in this second half for Auburn. He's a streaky player, and when he's good, man, is he good. And you see him get the body check there, but he got the lid off the rim a little bit for himself and his team. And as Wendell Green has struggled on the perimeter, KD Johnson's backcourt mate have been missing an action offensively recently, but not anymore. Stays here, 20 on the timer. 
And if you're West Virginia, you got to tell yourself, no paint touches on an inbounds pass here. Auburn's so good at getting it in down low on these inbounds. Williams, aggressive attack, got a Conquo in the air. It rolls out, but he earns two free throws. A Conquo bit on the head fake. And these free throws, Dane, could tie things up. He's such a smart player, really a point forward for them. He had seven assists in his last game, a high IQ guy. You see the patience there, being able to put it on the deck, get the defender in there, get himself to the strike. Williams, one of three Tigers in double figures, misses the front end. One last reminder, we've got the exhilarating slate of games, our 10th annual SEC Big 12 Challenge is the last one. Take a look at a couple of the signature matchups. Top 10 battle in Knoxville, Kansas, Kentucky at eight. We set the bar high with this one, hadn't we? <laughs> yeah. Well, this place has come back alive, as you would expect, final minutes. Inside WVU Coliseum, and Bob Huggins calls the timeout with 2.12 to go. One point game in Morgantown, a 30 second timeout. Virginia by one. It was a big possession earlier, Dan. It's a baseline drive, but they're not going to score on the drive. It's all about a reverse pivot, get that back screen. That's how they got Stevenson to look, where he has not had many clean ones here in the second half and they're going to need him and others to step up because this game is huge for the West Virginia Mountaineers who are right there on the bubble with a chance for a quad one victory. Right now, if you look at Lunardi's bracketology, last four in, look, we got a whole bunch of games remaining, and so you can go either way. But West Virginia, you're right, as one of those what we call quad one win opportunities. All that means is this is a really important game. Uh, it's huge for West Virginia and for Auburn. Bruce Pearl said he's got probably the toughest 12-game stretch on his schedule that he's ever had as a coach. Stevenson just won't be denied. Six triples and a 30-piece. Inside of two minutes, Flanagan is open. Good feed, left it short. Stevenson the rebound, says let's slow. Four-point lead for the Mountaineers. Timely buckets all afternoon for the fifth year senior from Lacey, Washington. Last year of college hoops here in Morgantown, making his impact felt. This is Tucson into the paint, a patient attack. Rebound down to Oconquo. He's been everywhere on the glass in this second half. And that's a foul on Broom, a little too physical after the missed shot. Well, what a clutch shot there on the previous possession by Stevenson. I mean, this guy just wakes up wanting the ball. Uh, I saw how hard he competed at South Carolina in practice yesterday. From a competitive standpoint, he is absolutely elite. He wants it, doesn't shy away from the moment. So now Okonkwo at the free throw line, less than 50% at the stripe, hits a huge one. Five point advantage for West Virginia, 116 to go. They saw the 16-point halftime lead disappear. Auburn tied it up a few minutes ago, but they haven't lost the lead yet. Two-possession lead for the Mountaineers. Green between the legs, back out to Johnson. Flings it up. Oh, a wild shot. How did that one go down? And then a whistle with 58 seconds remaining. Now, the clock might have uh, run down after the made basket. You got to stop it right at a minute after a make uh, in the second half. That might be what Gary Maxwell is going to the monitor to take a peek at. But anywho, Katie Johnson with a wild lay-in to get it back to a four-point game. He takes some wild shots and he makes some wild ones. That time better be lucky than good. Got the contact off the glass. And right now, Bruce Pearl, who his reputation as a coach, doesn't press as much as he used to, but nobody has 
more pressure sets in the full court than this guy, and West Virginia is going to have to take care of that basketball and move it extremely well and handle this pressure that you know is coming from Auburn for 94 feet. All right, so we got the right amount of time on the clock. They add .9 seconds, 58.9 remaining. West Virginia basketball, so if you're Auburn, again, you're still down two scores, but there's still some time. And they typically like to do full denial, and they'll switch guys on and off each other. If somebody crosses in front of you, help out. No pressure on the inbounds passer, so KD Johnson can help out and double team the open man. Johnson looking for two shots. Bumped by Flanagan. That's just, it's easier said than done. I mean, when you're Bob Huggins, you tell Tucson, hey, I need you to go get open, and you're gonna have two guys all over you. And just a terrific job getting himself open and a nice inbounds pass. Tucson, the senior from the Bronx. He was a starter at Iowa. He transfers after last season, looking for a larger offensive role. He finds a right place here in Morgantown. And this isn't his most prolific shooting game, but he has been a very reliable ball handler in this one. Hits the front end of the one on uh, one. And one. If you're Auburn, you start thinking about what are your quick hitter plays. A lot of things they like to do is throw it into the post and do a little crack back screen for Green to get it for a three-pointer on the wing. Virginia maintains a two-possession lead. Green rises, a big one, way off. Johnson tracks down the offensive rebound. Puts it up, that one was off the side of the backboard. And out of bounds. Now it looked like the initial call was Stevenson touched it, therefore Auburn basketball, but our official on the baseline signals we're going to take a peek at this one. Yeah, I'm with you. I thought it was good defense and officials and off, off of Auburn there. Let's see if he got a piece of it. Looks like he got a piece of the forearm more. I think this one's going back to West Virginia. Yeah. And so Gary Maxwell, Antonio Petty over at the monitor. So right now, you're either head coach, you're drawing up for Auburn a, an out-of-bounds play, but also a pressure set defensively, not knowing which way this call is going to go. But I'm with you. I think that's going to go to the Mountaineers. I think if I've calculated this correctly, two head coaches with, what, more than 1,500 combined wins, quite a lot. And those two have, boy, game plans very well today and they've delivered quite a showing to kick off this challenge but it's West Virginia that maintains the lead it's a six-point cushion and you would think that this one might get reversed and ball is going to go back to West Virginia Katie Johnson always seeking out contact and Maybe more so Okonkwo's reach or his left hand is what perhaps led us to the initial ruling. Now they certainly can't go to the monitors and call a foul for the viewers at home. That's not something they can do. This is all about possession. Now Crawford comes over to spend some time taking a peek. Yeah, to your point, Dave, this is where you start to get a little restless if you're in either huddle. Indeed, West Virginia basketball. So now if you're Auburn, you can't let that much time pass before you foul. No, you, you can't. And if you're West Virginia, you want one of your better passers taking the ball out of the bound 
out of bounds, which they do. And same way, see if you can't get the ball in bounds to one of your better free throw shooters where they've got the guards up here. Johnson, Toussaint, Stevenson, Okonkwo, and Bell. The five out there for the Mountaineers. They're trying to close this one out. Still some work left to be done. Little pressure, Green reaches, and he's going to send Keetri and Johnson to the free throw line. And just one more here would make this a three possession lead for the Mountaineers. I thought Auburn had a chance there to foul the big man, Aquanco, who did a smart job giving it right back to the better free throw shooter. But you had a 50% guy with the ball in his hands. If you're Jalen Williams, you got to hustle up and go foul real quick before you can give it back. Miss the front end. Auburn back the other way. They need a big one. Williams open for three. Got it. Three-point game, 31.8. Auburn takes it away momentarily. Johnson on the ground, calls the timeout, and he's awarded the timeout. Charles Barkley fist pumping after Auburn hits a three and then takes it away. Hey, listen, Bruce Pearl told his team, do what Charles Barkley does. Find a way to win pregame. Charles left us a message it's from CB. He says, just win. And that's what we came here to do. We came here to represent the SEC, right? It's supposed to just be more, right? All right, road wins are hard, right? We need something special tonight to represent Auburn and represent the SEC. Simple, succinct message, just win. Yeah, and for West Virginia fans, you're sitting there scratching your head saying, we're our own worst enemy in so many close games this season. They've turned the ball over. They've missed free throws. In fact, they've even gotten technical fouls. Right now, you've got to put all that behind you, and it's, it's really a fine line. You can't be playing not to lose. Inside that huddle, you can't be saying, here we go again. You've got to have a short memory, go on to the next play, get a stop, and get a quad one victory to help improve your resume in a big time opportunity here. Boy, the KD Johnson steal though, boy, he's he's had a pretty impactful yep. second half, hasn't he? He has, and Jalen Williams not necessarily known for his three-point shooting, although he's very capable, just found that open spot in transition off the missed free throw. Clutch play by Auburn here in this second half. Dane, they've got a chance to tie it up with 26.3 to go. So you're thinking 30 seconds ago, West Virginia on the other end of the floor, with free throws. Misses the front end, the three, the steal, here we go. Williams finds Flanagan into Green's hands. Williams in the air, the three is up. Broome got a piece, and Conquo got his hand on it, and then Johnson secures the rebound. He's going to the line. They got a clean look, did Jalen Williams. Eric Stevenson was so concerned about fouling, he really didn't contest on that shot. Just did not go in. And so now, West Virginia's in the double bonus. So Johnson gets a do-over, and he's got two with 16.8 left. Bruce Pearl does have one timeout remaining. West Virginia with two. But luckily for the Mountaineers, Johnson, one of the best free throw shooters in the league, 83% at the strike. Yes. All right, he gets one more. Tighten it up a little bit. It's a little mental here. But this is a West Virginia program that prides themselves on being mentally tough. Here's an opportunity to show it. <laughs> Timeout. Four point lead. West Virginia in front with 16.8 to go. A little dramatic on that rim, ultimately falls through. As if there was any doubt, right? <laughs> Got the friendly roll. And right now, if you're Bob Huggins, you're saying, guys, we are one stop away from sealing this victory. Do not foul. Close out contest. They like to do a lot of switching. And with some of the ball screen motion and, and off ball screens that Auburn's going to do, I think you switch everything. You don't want to give them a free path to the basket for an easy two and let them get in their press. 
It's not a prevent type defense. You want to play your man to man principles, switch everything, contest shots. Can West Virginia close out what would be its second win against a ranked team in a week and a half? They knocked off TCU inside this building on the 18th. Road win a couple of days ago against Texas Tech. Auburn's got to go the length of the floor here with 16.8 remaining. Your first look's a three. If they take it away, go ahead and take the easy two. There's enough time to get in for a quick two, get in your press, see if you can't turn them over. Clock starts turning. This is green. 12 seconds. To Pearl, nine seconds to the basket. Yes, 7.6 to go, and Bruce Pearl uses his last timeout. Two-point game. It, it took some time to develop, so that's the downside, but it was the right play. Instead of jacking up a 35-foot contested three, live to see another play, and they did just that by getting Broom the ball with the easy two down low. See if they can't turn over West Virginia here in the backcourt. And yeah, the good news there, you extend the game. So it's still a two-point deficit. Now West Virginia has a timeout remaining. That was the last one for, uh, for Bruce Pearl. Both teams in the double bonus the rest of the way. So what that means, West Virginia, when it gets sent to the free throw line, barring Auburn doesn't create the turnover off the inbound, they've got two. And that may be... Puts it away with 7.6 left. However, they got to get to the free throw line first. Bruce Pearl setting up his full pressure denial right now. Be curious if they continue to not put anybody on the ball. They've been using that guy as an extra defender to try to create a turnover. If West Virginia does get in a bounds, Bruce Pearl is certainly drawing up a play since he's out of timeout. Said make or miss on the other end. Here's what we're running, which certainly would have to be a three-point shot, assuming West Virginia at least splits a pair on the other end. Safe to say the challenge is off to an entertaining start in Morgantown. Wow, so this is a new pressure set. Two guys up front, Broom with this huge wingspan on the ball. Trying to bother Johnson, bounces it to Stevenson. 6.2 to go. And Eric Stevenson, who has been the man today, he's got 30, has a chance to maybe put this one away with two. Yeah, pretty fitting for Stevenson at the line to ice this game. I mean, the difference in this game has been West Virginia has Stevenson and Auburn doesn't. He has been absolutely phenomenal. I love the chip on the shoulder he plays with. Super competitor. This guy talks the talk, but he also walks the walk. And I know he's walking up to that line with a ton of confidence. Six triples today for Stevenson. The most important ones right here at the line. is out six seconds a three ties it three seconds green rises for three left it short west virginia hangs on and knocks off auburn uh, west virginia elected not to foul and play it out and wendell green got a good look but the west virginia mountaineers pulled off and a huge resume building victory defending their home court what a time to go for a career-high 31. Stevenson, the star at West Virginia, has its second win against a ranked team in 10 days. For our entire great crew, for Dane, I am Kevin saying so long from Morgantown. A big one for West Virginia. Coming up next, Alabama and Oklahoma. That's in Norman. Let's head there now. Here's Carl Ravitch and Jimmy Dykes in Oklahoma.